back in our old friend the Woody and route to St. George, Utah. We don't know if any cars exist there, but it looked like a nice place near Zion National Park. So uh, join us as we try to find some old cars in St. George. St. George, Utah, and we pulled into town, don't know where to go, I could go up and down every street, but decided to Google auto restoration shop, and there's one we're going to right now uh, called Troy's Custom Paint. We're going to see if he has any suggestions on where we can start, kind of jumpstart the system and see if we can find somebody that uh, is into old cars who will turn us on to somebody else and somebody else. So this would be a case study to see if this method works. This was a miss. They said, they're nice guys. And they said, well, I guess we'll have to just admit that we don't know anybody around here with old cars. But they advised us to go to another place in St. George called Steve's Hot Rods. And apparently he's got all sorts of projects going on. Uh, and so that might be a good place to start. So here we go. Part two. Excuse me. Might you know of anybody that's into old cars? I'm not looking for pretty, I'm looking for neglected. Right, All right. Mm. All right, well you got a great dog. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. Thanks. Well, we tried another uh, time-honored uh, method of finding old cars. Let's talk to a police officer. This seems to be a high-end area. I don't know, I just get the feeling everything is real clean, the houses are new. It's, it's probably not the type of area that old cars organically hang out in. Oh, look at this. Well, we found our first place. So, let that be a lesson to you. That you knock on enough doors, eventually somebody will answer. That's a, that's a two-door wagon like my 53. How you doing? So one of the methods we use when going into a town where we don't know any old cars are. One thing you could do is ride up and down every road and look in people's backyards. But the other thing you could do is get on Google, search for businesses that are restoration shops, hot rod shops, junkyards if you have to. So we Googled uh, hot rod shops. Steve's Hot Rod Garage came up and Steve Nielsen has been kind enough to allow us to come and look at some of the cars that he has and, and maybe advise us on some that he uh, knows about in other parts of the town. So Steve, thanks for inviting us here. Uh, so you, you're a hot rod shop. How long have you been in business? About eight, uh, about nine years, I guess. Nine now. years. Okay. Yeah. Now, do people bring you cars and you make hot rods out of them, or do you find cars for to, to spec? Or we do it? both. Yeah. Um, more of people bringing them in. We don't. We we find them. We don't seem to get our own done a lot, but no, I know, I know. we're always working on everybody else's. Right. Right. Um, but well, what attracted us, you know, coming off the street and you see. We, I'm not looking. I'm not looking cars. for pretty stuff. I'm looking for this stuff. <laughs> well, mission accomplished. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm a VW guy. You're yeah. at a Chop Square back here. Uh, what's What's the story with this? Um, you know, I went to California to buy a truck, and it was just horrible. <laughs> and we didn't want to leave with an empty trailer. And we found this, and you you purchased it the way it is. Yeah, the way it is. Yeah, well, we that... brought it back, and he had tried to chop it, but he didn't have a lot of experience uh -huh. so we were gonna see what we could do to save it and uh it runs we had it running so it didn't really it is a runner it's got a pancake motor and yep it's got a stick shift it. yep. but um yeah the chop job's not the greatest <laughs> so, so will you re-chop it somehow you know we we've, we've been debating whether we chop it or maybe we'll just make it a permanent convertible we may do that <laughs> really <laughs> sometimes that's wow kind of a neat thing to do, you know. And this is a car on spec, although you bought it and you'll sell it on spec or you're mm -hmm. gonna keep it for yourself or what? Um, yeah, I'll probably sell it. I've got a couple I'm gonna keep. This isn't really one of them. It was just 
we didn't want to leave with an empty trailer after going all the way to no, San Diego. I, I, so I, I agree with you, man. So yeah, we'll we'll fix it up and probably sell it. And okay. and if somebody comes along that wants it prior to us doing it, then we'll sell it too. All right. Well, so. somebody watching this may like it the way it is, so yeah. they can fix it. What would you ask yeah. for it the way it is? You know, it's uh, you know, I don't know. I didn't think about selling it. It's probably a couple grand, I would think. Okay. You know? Yeah. Now, this, I mean, big old Chrysler four door doesn't have much traction to a hot rodder, or does it? Well, this one's kind of a neat one. It, it's got, everything's original. All the parts are there. It's got the Hemi motor. It's a smaller Hemi, but it runs and everything Can works. Can I see the motor? Is that a 331? Hey, come on, he's got to open it. He's, you got to, the, yeah. the cable's broke, so he's got to oh, oh, oh. be a contortionist. So here. what year is this? Uh, 52, so it's got a 331 Hemi with uh, the built-in bell housing. That's a 750 pound motor. <laughs> it's a, it's I a know monster. It well. Yeah, we put it on the trailer. We almost didn't think we were going to make it. It was so dang heavy. Really? I've got one of these in a car. Exactly that motor with four single barrels. Is huh. It? Chrysler Corporation Detroit. That's pretty That's cool. Kind of a neat car. Yeah, it is. So what, what will become of this? Will um, be restored? Or? We've actually done a deal with a guy here who's got a, a friend of ours who has a motorcycle shop around the corner. And he wants it to be a shop truck or shop car or something. I don't really know. He's going to just... It's uh, going to be his grocery getter. Yeah, there you go. And just kind of leave it the way it is? Kind yeah, of he's got a couple of them that are kind of rat rotty like this. We are going to clear coat it. And so Okay, so this is leaving you, so it's no longer available. Yeah, this one's done. Now, this is what I do when I see a Mustang. I walk over to the left side, and I look up the, the fifth digit. And if it's, if it's a K... I'm all over it, mm -hmm. K-code car, but this is a C-code car, so it's a 289, but less this less desirable. So here's a new, another Dodge. Is this a Dodge? Yeah, this is one we saved from the Crusher. Oh, wow. Right. Um, a, a scrapper I know came, and he said, hey, I got this car. It's got a bunch of parts in it, and they're all in the trunk and everything, and the dash, and I mean, it literally looks like almost everything's here. He just said, I hate to see this thing go to the yeah. Crusher. Nope, you know, so. and so he, he said, I'll deliver it to you, and I, I forget what we paid for. It wasn't much, a few hundred bucks, probably. It's got a title or no title? It's got a title and it's everything. It's got a title. got a title and everything. Anyway, um, yeah, so we've still got storage, but we'll have to drive there if you want to How see it. How about the 57 wagon back there? Is that worth it? Yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that that's the kind of stuff one? our viewers love to see. We had a guy, in fact, it's for sale, and everything there is for sale. It's pretty rough. He was, he's about my age, and he was brought home from the uh, hospital in this car. Wow. So he thought it'd be really cool to do the car up and show it to his mother and, uh, you know. So he took it apart, and that's where it stopped. No, he didn't do a thing. He just brought it to us, oh. and we tore it apart, and he started looking at it, and, he, and once we get him apart, then we have a better idea of what we're up against. Sure. And once we showed him what was what and kind of how much we're going to, oh, we've got a shelter here, so yep. we may get barked at. Yep, yep. Um, but uh, he just said, you know what, that's more than I care to take on. So he said, I, I think I want to just part it out. Wow. And so, he, in fact, just today he hauled off the fenders and and he's coming next week to get the body. So what a shame. If I mean, you look I, at the... I'm looking at this thing. It looks pretty good to me. Well, this is a 1957 Ford wagon. And as you know, I'm a, I'm a wagon guy. Uh, it's called the Country Sedan, which was the non-wood sided model. The Country Squire was the one with the fake wood siding. And this car is not so bad. I mean, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the floors. It's got some Bondo back here, but I'm looking at the rocker panels, the foot boxes, firewall. Unfortunately, the owner of this car is parting it out, which is really too bad because uh, it was a complete car. Somebody would love to have this car to, to uh, hot rod, rat rod, restore, or whatever. Um, so, that, you know, this, this, is, this is a sad, sad case of a car that will ultimately wind up in a junkyard, probably. I can see it, it, it's, it's red and white, but originally it was blue. I'm not sure. It was probably blue and white. You can see the blue up in here. So the gentleman that owns it came home from the hospital in this car when he was born. So it had a sentimental um, value to him, but he's uh, decided it's, it's probably more trouble than it's worth to uh, restore it. So he's just selling the parts, which breaks my heart. Now Steve said he's got a couple of storage buildings. Uh, we're going to ride over there in the Woody right now and, and see what he's got there. So 
we're in storage unit number 11, and now we're going down to storage unit number 16 to see what might be there. So this was your high school van? <laughs> this was my high school van. Yeah, this has been sitting back there for 20 something years. No. I've no. had it 42 years. Last registered in 88. 88, yep, up Man. in Salt Lake. Yep, so wow. yeah. Wow, that's some interior. Yeah, I used to work, there was a company called Custom Van of Utah, and that was back in the 70s and 80s when ba you know, vans were the, the thing. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I did the upholstery and, and the body work and paint, and of course, we need to do a bunch of that again now, but... Um, if this van's a rocket, don't come and knock Yeah, and this was an old... I was a big Prince guy. I used to... <laughs> hence the name. Yeah, no that kidding. That was one of his songs, and uh, it's funny. We, we wanted to put 59 Cadillac taillights yeah, in it, yeah, yeah. but back in the 70s... Nobody reprogrammed them. Yeah, you couldn't find them. You had to buy a 59 Cadillac. You That's know? And funny. So we took and bought some acrylic and made them, put them in a lathe. In my, my buddy's dad's lathe, he was really happy about it when we got done because there was plastic everywhere. <laughs> so this is when you were in high school you did all this work? Uh, just you, out of high school. I was were, about 19. And what did you do for a living then? I worked on vans for a living. I, I was the, in the upholstery shop and the paint shop, and we used to do all those graphics, you know. And so I did this whole thing inside, and it's all biscuit tuft, and it's, it's pretty nice. We, we, it, it won a couple autoramas in a ah, day, cool. you know. So. Shaved door handles. Shaved door handles, gullwing door on that side. Right, I'm going to tell you something right now. Do you know the brand of that? Don't tell me. Do you know the brand of that? Uh -huh, I do. do you? You know, you know, I do indeed. Do you, I know the, do you know who designed it? I do. I wrote a book about yeah. it. Oh, you did? I yeah. have the book. Dean, Dean Jeffries. Yep, Dean that's, Jeffries. Yep. That's the that's coyote. That's coyote. Yep. Isn't that something? Yep. You know, he, his, he passed away, but his son still has got the molds. Yeah, I heard that. And I said, man, like, why don't you just come out with a, you know, like a limited run of bodies? Because I'll, yeah. I'll buy one. Yeah. So how long have you had this? I've had it a couple years, probably. So this is a dune buggy that was built by a guy named Dean Jeffries and a guy who I knew really well. He was a good friend. This was called a coyote. And... Uh, uh, it was a result of the Myers Manx coming out, which was the first kind of fiberglass dune buggy. And Dean came out soon thereafter with this style, completely different style. Actually, he, he built the Monkey Mobile. He and Mike Nesbitt, who was uh, one of the, you know, I guess the lead singer of the Monkees, mm -hmm. uh, drove Coyote Number no. 1 on the Baja 1000. And they, mm -hmm. that's the car he still has. Yeah, so, I, I know Mike Nesbitt pretty well too actually you really yeah, yeah. I, I had a limousine service for 20 years and did the transportation director for a concert company up in Salt Lake <laughs> for 20 years so yeah yeah this one is the um, car that 30 Ed Roth did or did the oh, we don't think he did the whole car actually uh, we yeah, think he just did the striping. this is not radical enough but this is all you know you can see his name in here yeah so, I'd, I'd say he pinstriped it yeah it's this is fiberglass yeah. we actually want to take this off and put a steel one on and hang this on the wall because we don't want we're going to oh, change yeah. the color and everything yeah 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 but i don't want to see that go away so this is this belongs to your friend's wife now, this right? is my daughter oh that's right your daughter yeah, yeah this they, is my you daughter need, you need to save that yeah she's uh and she she wants it done black and teal but we want to keep that so we're going to buy a new everything yeah. here and do it in steel so take a look at this 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 pinstriping was done by a guy named big daddy ed roth who some of your old timers that are watching this might remember the Rat Fink and a bunch of custom cars that he built. And he did the pinstriping on this. And you know, he lived here in Utah. That's he lived right. in Manti. Did Mantai. he become a Mormon or something? Yeah, actually yeah. he didn't. He lived right by the Mormon building yep. up there, you know, yep. temple or yep. whatever. All right, so don't so. tell me, is that a 35 Oldsmobile? No. Buick? Nope. <clears throat> keep going. You're headed in the right direction. Just keep going up. And don't look up on those boxes above your head to your right there. I might give you a clue. It's not a Chrysler, is it? <laughs> a Caddy? Yeah. 35 Caddy. That's a Caddy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 35 Caddy. I'm kidding. That was a, a guy here. All these cars, you know, they always have a story, don't they? Well, that's why we're talking to you. We want to hear the stories. <laughs> uh, a guy here in town, and he lives up on a big house in the hill, and he's got a nice little shop. Mm -hmm. And um, he was building these Cadillacs. And what he would do is he'd take them and put them on like a 60 frame and motor and, and you know, make them runners and, yeah, and yeah. really nice. Then he'd, he'd restore them back to what they should have looked like. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was one, and he got this far on it and decided he didn't want to do this anymore. And now what he's working on is the biggest bronze in the world of the, like, Wells Fargo stagecoach and horses. I'll have to show you a picture. I have a picture. 
of that sitting next to the horse and it comes to about its knee. That's how big the horse is that he's building. But oh, he sold these to us and we got all the parts and the spare tire covers and everything up here. And, um, and you'll, you'll try to sell that to a customer? No, you know, I, I really want to keep that one. Really? <laughs> I really want to keep that one. Wow. Yeah, that one is, um, I don't know. I, you know how everything is. It, it'll probably get sold. Does that, does that I have, want to finish it. That's one I do want to do. Does it have wood know. inside the body? Uh, yeah. GM, GM cars had a lot of wood in the body. I, they did. This yeah. still got, it's still got everything. The, the doors all have the wood and everything in them. He replaced the top with metal because he liked oh, to do yeah. the whole roof metal. Yep. All right, so you got a VW pickup here. Yeah, and that's a, a friend of mine sold me that. Um, there's a guy in California, he's like the Volkswagen guru, you know, and, and I guess his boys still run the company. If you said his name, I'd remember it. Uh -huh. But apparently it was built by him back in the day, and it has a Corvette rear end and motor mid-engine. And all he did was weld a Corvette. Corvette, not Corvair. Corvette, yeah. It, he welded a Corvette back half and motor to the middle of that and back. Oh man. So it's got the transaxle, it's got all the stuff that the Corvette had back in the day. And the motor, he drove it around Vegas for a couple months. Somebody broadsided him on it. there and, and he put it in a field and it sat there 30 years until my buddy who'd sold it to him originally went back, hauled the thing back to Provo, Utah and I found it sitting out in the field. And I said, what are you going to do with that? And he goes, sell it to you. <laughs> so I he mess he made with... me promise to never sell it. So I, I, would, I wouldn't mess around with that Beetle. I would work on this thing. Yeah, I... You could do wheelies down Main Street with this. Oh, I'll, with a motor like that, you bet. <laughs> and you know what's cool? The guy never finished. He had the fender. There's the fender. <laughs> he had the fender the whole time and Isn't never fixed something? it. Just parked it in the field and let the sun rot away the rest of the plastic. That's pretty cool. Uh, this this is a good unit right here. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, this is there. the yeah this is the one that somebody doesn't want you to pay on. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so they can have Pawn Stars do it or not? The, <laughs> who's the other guys? The Storage Wars. Storage yeah. Wars. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> now, how about this pickup? That's a GMC. This is Apache. Yeah, uh, kind of a sister truck to the one I got in the showroom. This is a '55 GMC. It's not the automatic. Mine has the uh, Hydromatic four speed uh, at the one in the shop. This one's a manual. It does yeah. have the V8, which is the Pontiac motor. I bought this from a guy out of Texas who was getting ready to restore it and then had an opportunity to buy a house and couldn't spend the money on the truck and needed money. So we bought the truck and he shipped it up to us and we're just gonna put it together or sell it, one or the other. Wow. These trucks are real rare. You know, you know the 55 sure. GMC is a rare bird. You know, yes. There's not many of them and we will sell this one. You will sell, okay, so. Yeah, and if, the, the difference between this and mine is this is a big window, and mine has the small window, but I have the different tranny in it, so. So what will you ask for this, the way it sits? Um, this one had everything for it. it, has every single part for it to get back to running, and it was a runner, so I think we were asking for like 11 for it. 11 grand, and it's a runner. Yeah. yeah. So you can pull it, it out of here, put air in the tires. <clears throat> well, the motor's not bolt. He set everything back okay. in, because he was, he had it torn apart. Yeah. But I had a video of it running, you know, uh -huh. prior and what motor, to is it, What motor is that? And I don't know if it's true or not, but I need to check it out. But I've heard that the V8 plant in Detroit burned down. And so if you wanted the V8 motor that year, you had to have the Pontiac V8. Now, this must be some kind of deluxe because it's got trim around here. It it's, is, yeah. It's got chrome trim around the windows. Right. That's that's a nice Yeah, and truck. that I think is the uh, with the V8. I, maybe ah, it made it right? the deluxe. Yeah. Now is that a half ton? It, it looks I mean, like this one is. Mine is weird because mine was pre uh, special ordered. Mine is a half ton to the back of the cab and a three quarter ton from their back. I, even the brake lines change. I, I don't understand that really. But from the factory. From Jeez. the factory. Yeah. Huh. All these boxes in the back are all the parts. No They're kidding. all crated, yeah. So it's all complete. You got yeah, the, we you have got pictures the of everything that he put in them, and it's all complete. Everything's there. Yeah, everything's he there. even says the glass is there, and I, I suspect it. Well, there's a window right there. Yeah, anyway. there's glass. Well, that's and pretty And then this is cool. our truck with the LT1, like your motor in it. Uh -huh. And we just, um, I think my daughter found this one, actually. And uh, we Well, this is the one that had a big block, but it was taken out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to use this as kind of a... A promotional kind of a truck for mm -hmm. the shop, you know, and me because I'm gonna drive it. <laughs> this, this, this was a good, good stop. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Man, I mean, we're so lucky to have stumbled on you guys. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Well, I appreciate that. Now, if I can just get my wife to think the same thing, I'd be <laughs> styling. <laughs> get her on her phone. Get her on her phone. I'm going to tell her how cool her husband is. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.